Where are you going, lady? To the airport. I've just got 20 minutes to get there. 20 minutes? Gee, lady, that's 26 miles. I know it is, but it's a matter of life or death. Won't you please? Sure, come on, we can make it. Well, did okay. Boy, I'm glad that's over. Yeah. What do we do with this crate, Tony? We'll leave it right here and beat up to the cabin and yours. Come on. Miss that junior prom, I'd have just died. Junior prom? I drive 20. Listen, Bye. Young lady. Bye. Life or death. So it's you again. Hello, Mac. Remember me? Have I changed much? Not since yesterday. Well, make it easy on yourself. Suppose I take that one traffic law that you didn't violate. Well, what did I do? Well, you went through three Boulevard stops. Oh, no, Mac. Speed at 90 per hour. This car won't go that fast. I went through a safety zone. Only one? Or, I mean, uh... Hello? Just because your name happened to be James F. Talon Jr., don't think you can get away with this. Well, no, I... Now, listen, Mac. You know my dad's got a soft spot in his heart for you. But the new traffic judge ain't got no heart at all. Let's go see him. Well, all right, Mac. I'm always glad to make new friends. Say, I'll bet you a good cigar I can beat you to the station. They ought to give him life. They ought to, but they won't. This old man's running for the third term in the U.S. Senate. Well, Mr. James Farbush Talon, Jr., I got a hunch helping the girl down to the airport was a mistake. Yeah, so have I. If the judge is very tender-hearted, you might get out of jail by the time you're old enough to vote. Hello, Jimmy. Well, it would be you. And you took the very words right out of my mouth, son. Say, listen, why don't you do me a favor and go out and get yourself a nice, clean murder case and write about that and let me alone for a while. You don't know what good copy you'll make, Jimmy, my boy. How was the rush to get that girl to the airport? Well, now, seeing that you're the Herald's ace reporter, why don't you find that out? All right, but you might at least show me how you helped her into the plane. Why, certainly. Anything for the gentleman of the press. How about a date when you get back? 
Say, hey, wait a minute. You're not going to use that picture, are you? Oh, no, no, Jimmy. Of course not. Get that right over to the office. See you later. Okay. What do they let guys like that come in here for? I want to talk to Senator Talent. This is Lawrence Deering of the Morning Herald. Oh, one moment, please. Mr. Deering of the Morning Herald. Hmm. One of Atwood's reporters. I don't want to talk to him. I'm sorry, but... Sen How can you be so cruel? I want some news. I said Senator Talent is engaged. Engaged? Oh, well, that is news. Who's he engaged to? Listen, young Talent is in jail, and the Herald would like to know if senatorial influence is going to be used to spring the lad. Jimmy's in jail. In jail? Hadn't you better talk to him? Yes, I... Oh, no. Uh, that is, not until I know what it's all about. I'm sorry, but Senator Talent has nothing to say for publication. All right. Get my attorney on the phone, Edith. Hey, Deering, wait a minute. Get through here and I'll drive you over to the paper and get you promoted to the comic section. Slug. Hey, listen, Chief. You don't think they'll really throw me in the jug, do you? Well, if you don't get a jail sentence, it's a bet that you'll get six months without a driver's license. How long? A year. Oh, all right, all right. I heard you the first time. What's that? The Tony Scarlatti file out of the morgue. He was paroled from the pen ten days ago. Well, police headquarters got a tip off that the Scarlatti mob pulled the Third Street bank holder. Say, look at this. Senator Talent was prosecuting attorney that sent Scarlatti up. Uh, what he thinks of Scarlatti's parole. I don't get it. Wait a minute. Hey, Chief. Got something you might interest in? I want to see Mr. Atwood now. Yes, but this is about young talent. Huh? Come on in. What is it, Billy? I just got word of something which may help your campaign, Mr. Atwood. What's that? Let's have it. We sure need plenty of help. Well, ten years ago, Senator Talent was a prosecuting attorney. He sent Scarlatti up the river. At that time, Scarlatti swore that when he got out of stir, he'd carve his initials on the senator's wishbone. I don't see how that's going to help this campaign any. Help it? It's the worst possible thing we could do to remind the public of talent's efficiency. Why, he was the finest prosecuting attorney this state hey, ever... Hey, wait a minute. Is it his campaign or mine that you're conducting? All joking aside, if something radical doesn't swing my way pretty soon, I don't stand a chance of beating talent. How about hiring a private detective to look into the past? We've had them. They didn't dig up a breath of scandal. Well, if Talent is such a good man, why run against him? Let's all vote for him. Say, I can handle your campaign, but you've got to furnish me material if you have to manufacture it. My personal fortune and all the resources of my newspaper chain are at your disposal. What more do you want? Yeah, I know, but... Uh, I just ran on to something which may be a lot of help to you, Mr. Atwood. What's that? Senator Talent's kid is in jail. Or at least he was there when I left the station. Uh-oh. What's he charged with? Practically everything except robbery and murder. Say, there may be something in Daring's idea. That kid's always getting in a jam. The kid isn't running for office against me. Talent is. Yes, I know, but the best way to beat him is to laugh him out of office. Make him look ridiculous. Sure. Play up the jam that kid gets into day after day and make a real issue of it. There's something in what they say, Atwood. The senator would look pretty foolish trying to control affairs of our commonwealth when he can't control his own son. But suppose the kid doesn't get into any more jams. Manufacture them. That's it. Every few days you can stick in a signed editorial asking the people what kind of father they're going to vote for, and things like that. Splendid. You look after the job, Deering. Take him off all other assignments. Yes, sir. But he isn't a bad kid. It seems sort of unfair to Everything's him. fair in politics. That's right. And it gives us a chance to ask the voters what rights they have to send such a man to represent them in the Senate when he's a perfect washout in his own home. Now we're getting somewhere. When do we get the first story? Tomorrow, Mr. Atwood. Good. <laughs> Oh, me? Yes, I can't 
seem to get my car started. I wonder if you'd help me. Well, sure. now. I get over there and put on a real good fight. Okay, but where's our Joe? <laughs> That's right, here. Thanks. I make it good. Get set. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you two guys fighting about? Well, listen, that's no way to fight anyhow. Look, here's what you want to do. See, this big guy, just hook him like that and crush him. Hold it! Snap that one. Nice cooperation, kid. That's better yet. <laughs> party in the state, I insist that you remedy this scandalous situation. It's most unfortunate that your opponent should use such disgraceful means to beat you. I think if you had a talk with your son and cautioned him to be more careful in the future, why... Uh... I intend to do that right away. Yes, sir. Will you have Jimmy come down immediately, please? Yes, sir. Of course, we do not, in a sense, feel that your son has done anything very bad, but headlines like these are going to cost us a lot of votes. Frankly, I'm more concerned with the effect it may have on Jimmy than I am being returned to Congress. Naturally, we're more concerned with the fate of the party than that of your son. Did you send for me, Dad? Yes, Jimmy. Come in. Sit down, son. Well, Jim, we better be running along. Very well, gentlemen. My boy. Young man, if your father loses his selection, he'll have no one to blame but you. Gee, I'm sorry about those pictures in the paper, Dan. Oh, all right. that's all right, Jimmy. I know you couldn't help it. As a matter of fact, I realize that Atwood is trying to capitalize on one of the traits that I so much admire in you, the quality of helping others. And you're not sorry at me? Sorry at you? Of course I'm not. <laughs> Even though I'm afraid it will uh, sort of jeopardize my political future. Oh, gosh, Dad, I wouldn't want anything like that to happen. Well, there's nothing much we can do about it now, I guess. Unless it's put you in cold storage till after election. <laughs> Even that they'd make political propaganda out of. Senator Talent abuse his only son. <laughs> well? You think you can behave yourself till after the election? I won't let you down, Dan. I know you won't, Jimmy. So long, boy. See you later. Don't forget. Watch your step. Don't worry, Dan. Hello, Kubi. So you know that that cold storage gag isn't a bad idea. What do you think? Huh? I know you hate to see me leave, but we gotta do it for Dad. Yes, sir. 
I'm leaving. Now you go on over there. Because I'm going to make this trip alone. You know, Coopley, if I go away for a while and if I can keep out of trouble, I think Dad's got a good chance of winning this election. Don't you? Goodbye, Kuby. Take good care of Daddy. Come on. Where are you going? Oh, I don't know. Up north someplace. Your father know? No, I don't want him to. I want to get away someplace where those reporters won't keep hounding me. I just want to drop out of sight until this election is all over. Oh, uh, you're going up north to your father's lodge? Listen, I, why do you have to keep asking me all these questions? Well, hadn't you better keep in touch with me? Supposing something should happen to him. All right, all right, I'll keep in touch with you. How are you traveling? Gosh, I don't even know. I can't drive without an operator's license. And, well, anyhow, I just want to drop out of sight. Do me a favor. I promise you won't say anything. Not if you say so. Gee, thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jimmy. And good luck. Hey. Yes, sir. I'm from the district attorney's office, investigating a robbery. Yes, sir. I'd like a little information. I'm glad to be of any assistance. We understand that a girl went out on the plane last Thursday afternoon. She's about five feet two, brown hair, blue eyes. When did you say that was? Thursday afternoon. We have only one plane leaving then, the four o'clock. Yeah, that's about right. We picked up the getaway car shortly after four o'clock, abandoned. I remember there was a girl. She just barely made the plane. Do you remember anything else? I know. We were just about to take off. The girl was in an awful hurry. Do you remember how she got here? Yes, there was a young fellow in a sport roadster. No one is allowed in here, but he drove right up. A sport roadster, eh? Yes, sir. What color? Oh, sort of a cream color. And just as the plane left, some cops come in on motorcycles and arrested him. Did you say that was the 4 o'clock plane on Thursday? Yes, sir. On Thursday afternoon, about that time, Jimmy Talent was arrested here at the airport for speeding. I was at the station when they booked him. Did he drive a cream-colored sport roadster? Yes, he did. Oh, he did, eh? We may want to question you again. Well, that's all I know, sir. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Young Talent again, eh? Let's go check up on this. Third Street bank robbery, and later your son picked her up. Well, I... Send for the boy and let you talk to him. What? Will you ask Jimmy to come in here, please? He isn't in just now. Have you any idea when he'll be back? No, sir, I haven't. He didn't say. Well, there's nothing more to be done until we talk to him. Will you see that he comes to the DA's office in the morning? Well, yes, of course. I want you to realize I'm very anxious to have all trace of suspicion removed. I do, Senator. I'm very sorry to trouble you. Goodbye. It's all right. Goodbye. Senator. Oh, yes. I didn't want to say anything in front of the district attorney's man, but... Well, what's the matter, Edith? You see, Jimmy's gone. He's left town. Why? He thought he was doing something to help you. Where did he go? He didn't say, but I think perhaps he went up to your lodge. Good heavens. Why, he suspected in connection with the robbery. We've got to get hold of him at once. Oh, he isn't running away from that. But without him, we can't prove it. If Atwood ever gets a hold of this, he'll make it look so bad for the boy, he may ruin him for life. See if you can get the lodge at once. All right, sir. This just about kills Talent's chances for re-election. 
course, we don't know yet that the kid is guilty. What's the difference whether he is or not? It's campaign material, isn't it? Yes, I know, but it's a shame to put the kid on the spot if he's innocent. Well, let Talon prove his innocence. You go over and see what he's got to say about it and get a statement from the kid. Yes, sir. Hello, Miss Sunshine. What are my chances of talking to the senator a minute? The senator has nothing to say, particularly to anyone connected with the Morning Herald. Oh, I have a heart, Miss Orlin. After all, I've got a job to do the same as you have. You're just wasting your time and mine, Mr. Deering. And maybe I could speak with Jimmy a minute. Jimmy isn't at home. Oh, no? Where is he? Is this uh, confidential or for publication? Oh, strictly confidential, I assure you. Jimmy's taking his streetcar ride. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Yes, Senator? Have you checked to see whether Jimmy is at the lodge? I'll come right in. I'll ask the Senator if you'll see you. Oh, not now, thanks. Oh, but you said you wanted to. I hope Jimmy enjoys that streetcar ride. Thank you, Miss Arlen. Senator? Oh, yes? Jimmy hasn't had time to get there yet. No, I suppose not. Well, if I didn't have to address that political rally, I'd jump in the car and go there myself. Would you like me to go? Would you mind? Not at all. I'm just as anxious as you are. I'll get some things together and leave right away. Thank you so much, Edith. That's quite all right. <laughs> Hey there, son. Come here. Where are you going? I was just on my way up to pasture. I gotta go up and see my father. She's sick. Do you live up there? Uh, no. Uh, yes, uh, sometimes up there. And, well, sometimes down there. And, well, sometimes I just go any place. What's the matter with you? Are you a foreigner? I didn't catch it, what? A foreigner? Where were you born? Oh, I, I, was, I was born down in Brooklyn. I guess that makes me a foreigner, huh? Is that Say, I've got a hunch that you're Senator Talent's son. Who, me? No, no, I, I'm not the, the Senator son. I, but I know that fellow who you, you mean, Jimmy, little Jimmy. Say, do you know he is the nicest fellow I ever meet? You, you should meet him, too. You would like him very much, I Have think. you seen him today? Today? No, no, I didn't see him today. And I didn't see him the day before today. But I think maybe I see him tomorrow. Hey, hey, that's Jimmy's car, there. Yeah. Hey, Jimmy! It is? Hey, Jimmy, yeah! Say, hey, you wait here till I get back. Okay, I'll wait right here on the spot. I'll be the friend, my friend. What would you have? 
Well, so it's my old friend, the news hound. Hello, Donovan. Fancy seeing you up here. Yes, you see, I'm on practically every street in town, so I'm figuring that the change is going to do us both. Little good. Hey, you're not going to give me a ticket, are you? Oh, no, I'm just lending it to you. When you pay the fine, the judge will take it back. Say, by the way, what are you doing up here? I'm taking a clipper ship to China. Now, on the level, Donovan, I'm looking for Senator Talon's kid. You haven't seen him, have you? No, and I've been looking for that kid. There you are. Thanks. Don't lose that. It's worth a lot of money. You big flat-footed... What's that? I said it's too bad this car wouldn't go any faster. Oh. Challenge Lodge? Yes, sir. But the senator ain't here much in the fall. It gets pretty cold up here, and Senator Talent's a mighty important man, and he has to take mighty good care of him. I know all about that. The one I want to see is Jimmy Talent. Master Jimmy ain't here neither, except in the summertime, and then he's mostly away at some camp or something. He's a mighty healthy young man, too. How about using the telephone? I guess that'll be all right. Thanks. But in the fall, it's usually disconnected. I'm not going to ask you what happens in the springtime. Look here. I've got something very important to tell Jimmy. Is he inside? No, sir. I didn't he ain't inside. I done told you that. He don't come up here Except very much. Except in the summertime. I know. Who's that? That looked like Miss Allen's car. But she don't come up here except when the senator's here, and the senator, you don't get in. Just skip it. Yeah, I'm sir. Who? Looks like we both missed the streetcar. I thought I'd find you here. Oh, it was a cinch after the way you tried to cover up the kid's disappearance. Clever boy, aren't you? You should go far. I should. A very good blonde reason. Hello, Miss Island. Uh, hello. Is Mr. Jimmy here? No, he isn't. Have you seen him? I haven't seen him at all. Thank you. Oh, lady. Do you want this? Or shall I throw it in the lake? Will you please get my bag? Yes, ma'am. May I take it, sir? <laughs> Not on your life. This is my passport. Mm, I thought that was Miss Island's bag. Well, looks like we're both locked out. Yes, sir, we ain't. Oh, have you got a key? No, sir. And we're not locked out? No, sir. I always leave the back door open. That's what I call using your head. No, sir. That's what I call using the back door. I'm awfully sorry. I didn't mean to lock you out. Oh, I didn't mind. How did you get in? We always leave the back. You have absolutely no right here. Get out. Well, why don't you put me out? It's a very good idea. Hello, Sheriff's Office? This is Miss Arlen at Senator Talent's Lodge. We have a very undesirable, objectionable character here. He forced his way in. Will you come over right away? Well, thank you so much. Well, you asked for it. <laughs> uh, didn't Martin tell you? Tell me what? In the fall, we always have the telephone disconnected. Oh, you're hopeless. Please sit down. You, you make, make me so nervous, nervous I can scream. scream. Oh. Look here, Miss Arlen. 
As long as we're both determined to wait here for Jimmy, couldn't we call a truce and be friends? I've always been in the habit of choosing mine. Mine have usually been thrust upon me, but uh, don't let that discourage you. Oh, on the contrary. I'm greatly relieved. What is this charm I have over women? Maybe it's your honor, your uh, humanity, and your great sense of fairness. Meaning, of course, that you think I've been injuring Jimmy? Well, injuring is hardly the word for it. You won't believe this, but if I thought for one minute that the publicity we've been breaking on Jimmy would hurt the kid, I'd be the first one to oppose it. You don't think you're hurting him? Who oh, is pride, maybe, but that's all. Of course, uh, making it appear that he's a criminal and a bank robber, that doesn't count. Listen, Edith. Miss Arlen to you. All right, Miss Arlen to you. Police statistics show that the most desperate criminals of today are just young kids, about the age of Jimmy. But Jimmy isn't a criminal. Maybe not. But if the district attorney doesn't locate him in short order, there'll be thousands of people who think otherwise. Because your newspaper will tell the world. Newspapers are printed to tell facts. They're also printed to sell. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you can run along and sell them. I need some help. Come here. Oh, yeah? Go put your checks on somebody else. Oh, wait a minute, kid. Come here. What's the matter with you? You sick? No, I had an accident, that's all. Well, I haven't got a license to drive, but I'll take you to the hospital. Oh, not a hospital. Take me up to Grants Pass. I got some friends up there. Well, all right, that's where I'm going. Come here, let me give you a hand. Take it easy now. This waiting around gets me. Yeah, we ought to scram out of here, Scarlatti. We've been hanging around here too long to suit me. Well, we're hunting a tamale after that Third Street job. I'll tell you when we leave in here. Well, Helen's had plenty of time to cash those bonds. Maybe she ran into a little trouble when she got off the plane. Anyway, if you guys knew you had come as well as she does, there'd be nothing to worry about. Well, I wish she'd step on it. I'd like to take it on the lamb. How about you, Tony? <laughs> that don't mean a thing. I got a little personal matter to attend to first. For 10 years, I've been waiting to settle with a certain guy. And I ain't blowing till I do. Meaning? You know who I mean. All right, have it your way. That's better. Maybe that's her now. Hey, it's Steve. Who's that with him? Go take a look, Joe. Blake. I don't know. I found him by the side of the road. He's pretty badly hurt. What happened, Steve? They winged me. Take him over to the couch. Come here, kid. He's hit hard, son. Careful, Fox. Let's get this coat and vest off. I'll get some work. I was walking along the road, and this guy said he needed help, so... I'm a thanks. <laughs> That's all right. What's your name? <laughs> What's the difference? See you later. Hey, you're not in a hurry, are you? No. Well, stick around a while. What for? You might find it interesting. All right. Well, I was spotting that crate outside, and I tried to take it on the lamb, and they... Cop plugged me. Did he tell you? Clean getaway. 
Joe, that car is hot. Take up the road and dump it. Listen, mister, I can ditch it for you. You stay here. Go ahead, Joe. Well, listen, can I go with Joe? I said you stay here. Oh, Steve, are you sure that cop didn't? <laughs> 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 You're a smart kid, ain't you? I thought you weren't in a hurry. Hey, Tony. There's something going on up at Talon's Lodge. Yeah, what is it? Well, I don't know. There's some smoke coming out of the chimney. There's a couple of cars parked around outside. Oh, yeah? Maybe this is just what I've been waiting for. Al, you stay here with Steve and watch the kid. Come on, you guys. How long are you going to wait around here? How long are you going to wait? I'm going to wait here until Jimmy arrives. Oh, then he is coming here. Thank you, Miss Allen. That's just what I wanted to know. Thought you might like some cocktails, Miss Arnold. Thanks, Martin. That's fine. Well. Help. Shall we call it a truce? All right. Here's to a better understanding. Here's hoping Jimmy shows up very soon. You know, he should be here by now. You don't suppose anything terrible could have happened? I mean, uh, police or... Would it make you feel any better if I went down to the village and telephoned my office? Would you please? Oh, it would be awfully sweet of you. Say, to hear that tone in your voice, I'd do anything you ask. Maybe I'd better go myself. I'll be back shortly. Edith. Don't forget, this time, don't lock me out. All right, hurry back. You stay outside and keep your eyes open. Okay, come on. Man, you can't come there like that. You got to tell me who you is. Oh, sure. Well, take my card. <laughs> yeah? Get over there. What do you men want? Where's talent? The senator's not here. What's the meaning of this? That's none of your business, sister. Who are you? I'm the senator's secretary. If you have any business with him... I can the chatter. Do you expect him? I'm sure. I don't know. Well, get on that phone and call him up. Even if I thought I should, I couldn't. Why? You see, the phone's disconnected. Try it. Yeah, it's dead, all right. Why don't you make her send him a telegram? That's a good idea. Get over there and write a telegram. I'll do nothing of the sort. I said get over there and write a telegram. Why should I? Don't give me any arguments, sister. Get over there and do as you're told. Now sit down and write as I tell you to. Uh. Come, Kaya. Take him out of here. We'll tend to him later. Now, maybe you'll write that wire. Imperative that you come to the lodge at once. All right, sign it. I'll let you do that. Good. What's your name? Wouldn't you like to know? Hey, sister, you saw what happened to your boyfriend, didn't you? Yes, and you're just a big enough bully to try it on me. Maybe this will help you, Tony. 
Her name's Edith Arlen. Hmm. And don't you move. No, sir, boss. I ain't going no place. I'll be right here when you come back, if you... Here. Edith Arlen. It's her, all right. The description fits her perfectly. Did you figure that out all by yourself? Shut up, you. Yeah, Blake. Take this down to the grocery store and phone it in. All right. Well, say, you better keep this. You're liable to get arrested if you haven't got one. You should know all about that. And so, my friends, from Alderman in my home city to prosecuting attorney of the county, from there to the state legislature, and finally, the Senate of the United States, always I have had one thought in mind, one ideal, service. Service to my state and our people. That is all I have ever asked. I have hoped to serve you for six more years. My record speaks for itself. What about your son's record? And the Third Street bank robbery? I'll answer that last question. My opponent is using his chain of newspapers to cast libelous innuendos in an attempt to injure my son, thereby hoping to injure me. My friends, in a political campaign, custom ordains that we omit personalities. My opponent, Mr. Atwood, has seen fit to ignore this custom. But I give you my word, I should use every means at my command, not only to clear my name, but the name of our party. I thank you. That was fine, Jim. Very nice. Uh, telegram, Senator. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, just a minute. Well, that's odd. What's that, Jim? Why, I've received a thousand telegrams from my secretary, and she always signs the name Arlen. Never Edith Arlen. Is there anything significant about that? There might be. Hey, get the car ready once. Yes, sir. In any event, I think I'd better leave to the lodge right away. But, Jim, there's a few things I want to talk to you about. Gonna stay here? Oh, yes, you are. Now, look, I did him a favor. Can't you do me one? I gotta get out of here. You're sticking around till Scarlatti gets back. What's the matter? Aren't you gonna fix me one? You're not crippled. Help yourself. All right, thanks. sent that telegram? Yeah, sure. Well, what do you think's keeping him? Listen, Tony, don't you think we ought to blow? We'll stay here till talent comes. Hey, boy, how about some more suds? No, sir, boss, we ain't got no more. You got no more beer? No, sir, we ain't got any at all. Well, what do you got in that closet? We ain't got nothing. <laughs> well, maybe I can find a little. That's better. Where do you think you're going, sister? I'm leaving. I don't like the way you've been blowing off your mouth around here. At that, I think you are leaving. Joe, take over to the cabin. Oh, uh, that'll be a pleasure. Come on, babe. Keep your hands off of me. You're the ones who've fallen off too much, Scarlatti. Now get over there, both of you. Open the back door, Edith. Joe, let me have him. Oh. 
Why, you? Come in, you. Now you butted in for the last time. To you. Why, you fresh little cop! That's talent. Take that guy with you and open the door. Come on, get over there and keep your mouth shut. Come on, get over. I get over there and answer that door, and not a peep out of it. Yes, sir, boss. Is... Yes, ma'am. Oh, is this? Uh, is yes, this... this is it. Was I expected? Hello, Helen. Where's Tony? He's over there. Hello, Tony. Hi, Toots. Well, you're just a little bit late for the party. Looks like you had quite a housewarming. You said it. Get the money? You bet. All right, let's have it. That's good work. Mm. Where do you think you're going? I was going over here, boss, and sit down and do as you say for me to do. Well, I didn't know this guy was Scarlatti until I saw his picture in the paper. What's he want? What's he doing here? He's after your father, Jimmy. He's going to kill him. What? Your dad's on his way up here now. Well, what are we going to do? Think we can make a break for it and hit him off? Whoosh. What are you so worried about? Want to get another one of your cute stories for your newspaper, huh? Well, listen, mister, if anything happens to my dad... Shh. Honest, kid, those stories are just part of my job. But getting out of a mess like this is something different. From now on, we three have got to stick together. Have any trouble? No. Hey, how did you know I was here? I stopped by the cabin. The boys told me. I'm worried about Dad. I've got to get out of here. Wait a minute, kid. He'd shoot you in a minute. I'll have to take that chance. Hey, listen, if you're a smart guy, you'll take a tip from me and beat it. The cops are on their way up here now. How do you know? Well, on my way up here, I saw dozens of them. Listen, they know you're up here somewhere. Listen, you know that picture over in the other cabin? Well, they got you linked with that Third Street job. If you don't believe me, ask the reporter. Look, it's only a matter of minutes. Listen, those guys will be around this house like, well, like bees around honey. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? No, I don't. Well, if it isn't our little speed feed. Well, hello, life or death. Well, isn't it? Hey, where do you know him from? That's the kid that drove me to the airport. Jimmy Talent, the senator's son. He... This is young Talent? Sure. Boy, what a break for me. Tony, the cops. So what? Listen, they've spotted us. Let's blow. What? Talent here? And the old man on his way up here? Not a chance. I got a better idea. Blake, to the door. Hey, Toots. Up to the cabin. Okay, Get rid of a quick getaway. Come back here, this way. Back door. What's the matter with you? Now you two, make love and make it look real. Come on, get together. Put your arm around her. That's better. Nice fellow, Scarlatti. <clears throat> Just had a call from Senator Talon to see if everything was all right up here. Yes, sir. Everything's all right. You sure everything's all right? Yes, sir. Ain't nobody here but Mrs. Arlen and that other gentleman over there. How do you do, Miss Arlen? I just wanted to be sure there was nothing wrong. Nothing. No, not a thing. I can see there isn't. Good day. Everything's all right, sir. Yes, sir. Everything's up. What are you trying to do? Get over there. 
All right, Joe, bring him over here. Well, that looked pretty nice. I almost thought you meant it. I did. It's getting too hot around here, Tony. Let's blow. Yeah, let's divide up the door and split. Sure. If you want to stay here and wait for the old man, that's your business. We're staying right here. It ain't right for you to expect us to risk a stretch up the river just to satisfy your personal grudge. What's the matter? You getting yellow? Did I ever give you a bad steer? No. But then... Well, do you want to quit now? Sure. Go ahead. I'll stick. That's better. Take it easy. That goes for you. And you too. Tim, wait for it. Never mind the kid. Oh, hello, Martin. I do, Senator. Uh -huh. Well, what's the matter with you? Don't you feel well? I feel pretty good, Senator, with my back. I have yes, a little I know. trouble. You, you look a little pale. Uh, uh, where's Miss Allen? Well, there you are. Jimmy! Well, what? Jimmy, my boy, I'm awfully glad you're here. I've been terribly worried about you. Thanks for wearing me, Edith. Hello, Larry. Oh, what's the matter with you? You look as though you'd seen a ghost. Do I look like a ghost, Senator? You don't remember me, do you? Yes, I remember you, Scarlatti. That's good. Because for 10 years, I've waited for this. But it was worth it. Come on, Scarlett, if you're going to do it, get it over with and let's beat it. Yeah, get out and start the car. Scarlett, you didn't bluff me 10 years ago, and you're not bluffing me now. I know you too well to think you're going to take a chance on killing me here in cold blood. Shut up. All right, you two. I get over there. Come up. Fix that up, all right, hey, Dad? Yes, I'm afraid we did, son. Say, Dad, don't you think you ought to do something for that reporter that helped us out of that jam up at the lodge? Yes, I do, and I intend to. Well, Mr. Deering is here. Oh, come in, Larry. And you too, Edith. Larry, I understand that you've uh, given up your position on the Morning Herald. Yes, I have, Senator. You know, in view of what happened at my lodge the other day, I feel a certain responsibility for your future. So, will you accept a position on my staff? Accept it? Why, I'm practically married to it. <laughs> no, I mean uh, the job, not Miss Arlen. <laughs> Edith, I leave you to instruct Mr. Deering in his new duties while I go and pack. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator. Come on, you two. Now get over there. Come on. Sit down. All right, now put your arm around her. Get close together. Now make love and make it real. That's better. Hello? Oh, no, operator, I don't want anything. Or, or yes, I do. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen, uh, get a hold of the Justice of the Peace right away, will you? And, and say, uh, how'd you like to come up and be a witness? Come on, <laughs> 